In the previous lecture, we have been talking about the concrete architecture and why is it good to use decision trees. The only problem we have to solve is how to decide what nodes and what features are important and what's not. So for example, what should be the root node? How many branches are there for a given node and so on? So there are lots of lots of questions we can pose when dealing with decision trees. And we are going to use information theory and Shannon entropy in order to construct a decision tree. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about the data set we have. We have four features in our data set, Outlook, temperature, humidity, and wind. And we have a single target variable, the last column, so whether we are going to play golf or not. And as you can see this data set, it doesn't contain any numerical values. It contains categorical variables. So as you can see, the outlook can be sunny, overcast or rainy. Temperature can be hot, mild or cold. Humidity can be high or normal. So basically we have to deal with categorical variables and this is why we like decision trees because they have the tendency to deal with both categorical variables and numerical values as well. Okay, so we would like to end up with a tree-like structure like this. The root node is the outlook. And because there are three types, as far as outlook is concerned, as you can see, sunny, overcast and rainy, that's why the root node has three branches, sunny, overcast and rainy. Then the overcast has a single leaf node. So if the weather is overcasted, as you can see, we are going to play tennis. As you can see, overcast and play is yes. If it overcast, the play is yes. We have two more overcast values and all of them has the target variable yes. So if the outlook is overcasted, then we are going to play tennis. So this is the decision tree we are after. But of course, somehow we have to decide what's going to be the root node, how many branches do we have and so on. So this is why we have to define the so-called Shannon entropy. So this ID3 algorithm is used to build decision trees. It is a top-down greedy search of possible branches and it uses entropy and information gain in order to build the decision tree. So we can define this HX Shannon entropy of a discrete random variable X where X can have possible values X1, X2 up to Xn and there's a probability mass function Px, then we can define this Shannon entropy with the help of this formula. It is minus the sum from i equals to 1 up to n, p x sub i times the logarithm of p x sub i. Okay, so we just have to deal with the probability, as you can see, as far as the given possible values of x are concerned. So there's a good example on Wikipedia, by the way. So if you navigate to Wikipedia and search for entropy as far as information theory is concerned, there is a good example for how to calculate Shannon entropy. So let's suppose the situation that we are considering heads or tails. In this case, heads and tails have equal probability 1 divided by 2, and that's why if we calculate Shannon entropy based on this definition, so minus the sum of Px times the logarithm of Px, we are going to end up something like this. i is equals to 1 up to 2, y2, because there are two outcomes, heads or tails. So that's why we just have to deal with two actions. And because heads and tails both have equal probability 1 divided by 2, we just have to calculate 1 divided by 2 times the logarithm of 1 divided by 2. And it's going to be 1. Okay, so as far as fair coins are concerned, the entropy is equals to 1. If we are dealing with not fair coins, the entropy is going to be smaller than 1. So if we have some p probability of heads 
and Q probability for tails, we just have to use the same formula as you can see. So the sum of P X sub I times the logarithm of P X sub I. As you can see here, we are dealing with probability P and probability Q because they are not the same. So the probability of heads and tails are not the same. It is not equals to one divided by two. It is P and Q accordingly. So that's why the total entropy is going to be smaller than one. So this is how we are dealing with entropy. Basically, if you want to understand decision trees, you don't have to know everything about Shannon entropy, but it's good to talk a bit about it because this is exactly what's happening in the background. Okay, so for completely homogeneous data set, the entropy is zero, and if the data set is equally divided, so there are the same amount of true values and false values, then the entropy is one. Okay, so as you can see, the value of the entropy is within the range 0 and 1. And why do we bother with Shannon entropy? Because a branch with entropy more than 1 needs splitting. So basically, this is how we can define the number of branches and the most relevant feature as the root node for the decision tree. We just have to deal with Shannon entropies. Okay, by the way, the root node has the maximum information gain, so the maximum entropy reduction, and the leaf nodes have entropy zero. So this is how we can decide what's going to be a root node and what's going to be a leaf node. We just have to calculate the given Shannon entropy. Okay, so for example, we would like to calculate the entropy of playing golf. So we are able to calculate the entropy for a given feature. In this case, we are after the entropy of the target variable. Okay, so if we calculate the number of no's and the number of yeses, we can come to the conclusion that we are playing golf nine times. So there are nine yes in this column and five no's in this column. So nine times we play golf and five times we do not play golf. If we want to calculate Shannon entropy, we just have to use the formula we have discussed in the previous slide. So we just have to calculate the probability of x, y multiplied by the logarithm of the probability of x sub i and we just have to sum them up. Okay, so in this case, the Shannon entropy of playing golf is the Shannon entropy of 9 and 5, because playing golf can have two values, yes or no. Yes for 9 times and no for 5 times. What's the probability of yes? We just have to divide 9 divide by 14, because we have 14 samples in the data set, and 9 of them are yes. So what's the probability of yes? It is 9 divided by 14, which is 0 0.64. So we just have to use this equation in order to end up with 0 0.94. So 0 0.64 times logarithm 0 0.64 minus, we have to deal with the other possible value for playing golf. Okay, in the data set, we have five no values, five divided by 14, why 14? Because we have 14 items altogether, so basically it is the probability of no, 0 0.36 times the logarithm of 0 0.36, and it is equals to 0 0.94. So this is how we are able to calculate the Shannon entropy of a given feature. And basically, it is the most important step as far as calculating the importance of a given feature. So this is what we are going to talk about in the next lecture. Thanks for watching.